Thank you for joining us today. We're here with Dr. Christopher Rosenberry, the Game Commission's Deer and Elk Section Supervisor. He's here today to speak with us about deer statistics. And with that, Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. For the majority of people, statistics bring up negative thoughts and may not be trusted. Common statements may include, you can make statistics say anything you want them to say, or statistics are just guesses. Despite these negative views, statistics can be used to solve important problems in wildlife management. And often, statistics are the only option when dealing with the realities of wildlife management. Common questions in wildlife management include, how many animals are in the population, and is the population increasing, decreasing, or stable? Unfortunately, counting wildlife is difficult. Wildlife are not adapt are adapted to their environments, and one of these adaptations is to minimize behaviors that expose them to threats. As a result, they can be difficult to see. However, sometimes they appear to cooperate with our interest in counting them, such as in this photo. Despite this cooperation, it is still not easy to count them. A few years ago, we posted this photo on Facebook and asked, how many elk are in the photo? The counts range from 24 to 31 elk. There are, in fact, at least 37 elk visible in this photograph. Even with a photograph, it was difficult to get an accurate count of the number of elk. As biologists, we are especially aware of the challenges when counting wildlife, and that is one of the reasons we have to rely on statistics in our work. Just as it's difficult to count wildlife in the field, counting the deer harvest is also difficult. In Pennsylvania, successful deer hunters are to report their harvest within 10 days. <clears throat> If hunters have DMAP permits, they are to report regardless of harvest by early February. Unfortunately, not all hunters follow these requirements. For regular deer harvest, about a third of successful deer hunters report their harvest. Back in 2013, DMAP reporting rates were not much better. To try and avoid DMAP reporting rates from falling to the low levels of regular reporting, we looked at results from previous hunter surveys. Most often, hunters identified forgetting to report as the most important reason why hunters do not send in their harvest reports. We tested this by beginning to send reminders to DMAP hunters each year in mid-January. And it appears that reminding hunters works, as DMAP reporting rates have increased to over 80% in recent years. Even with 80% reporting, we still do not have a complete count of the deer harvest. With incomplete counts provided by hunters, we again rely on statistics. Complete counts require simple math. 1 plus 1 plus 1 until you have tallied all the responses. And if given the choice, everyone prefers simple counts. Unfortunately, incomplete counts are the reality of wildlife management, and incomplete counts require statistics. As wildlife managers, we typically work with incomplete information. We do not see all the animals in the population because wildlife hide and are not seen. We do not get a complete reporting of the harvest because hunters are not perfect and they forget to send in report cards, they forget to return surveys, and sometimes they just decide not to provide the harvest information we request. Statistics, though, allow wildlife managers to estimate what is not seen or reported. In other words, we can take partial counts, combine them with additional data, and estimate the total. And deer harvests are a good example of using statistics to estimate the total with incomplete counts and additional data collected in the field. Deer harvest estimates are based on counts of deer checked in the field and hunter reports. We are fortunate we do not need to make guesses about any of the data we use when estimating the deer harvest. First, Game Commission biologists, foresters, and others who are trained to age deer check deer processors. In this example, they checked 100 deer processors. Next, hunters are required to report their harvest, and 50 hunters report, reported the deer checked by Game Commission deer agers in this example. For this sample, we calculate that each harvest report equals two deer because hunters reported 50 deer, but we actually checked 100 deer. Therefore, each report represented two deer. Next, we look at the number of deer reported by hunters in the wildlife management unit. In this example, hunters reported 1,000 deer in the unit. From our deer aging data, we know that each harvest report equaled two deer, so the harvest estimate is 2,000 deer. This is a general overview of how we estimate the harvest for antlered and antlerless deer in every unit each year. In this example, the blue numbers represent counts. 100 deer checked, 50 deer reported, etc., and red numbers represent calculations. 
Because statistics do not provide complete counts, we double check our results by estimating deer harvest from a hunter survey. Each year, 2% of hunters, or about 18,000 hunters, are randomly surveyed after the hunting season as part of the game tape survey. These surveys ask hunters, what species did you hunt? Where did you hunt? How often did you hunt? And how many did you harvest? This survey follows standard survey protocols and the results from this sample of hunters who are sent to the survey are expanded to all hunters to estimate total harvest. The next question is, how well do these statistics work? Based on available data, our procedures work well. We cannot judge our estimates against the true harvest because that is unknown. However, when we have two harvest estimates giving similar results, it increases our confidence in the estimates. This graph shows the agreement between our estimates based on reporting rates in blue and those from the game take survey in red. Over the last two decades, or over the last decade, the two different methods have, of estimating deer harvest have tracked each other closely. This consistent and long-term agreement between two different methods increases our confidence in our harvest estimates. Despite this agreement, demands for complete counts continue to be heard. For our reporting rate deer harvest estimates, a common complaint is every hunter should be required to report regardless of harvest, so there is a complete count of the harvest. For hunter surveys, a common complaint is I did not get a survey, so your results are not correct. Although talking about two different statistical methods, the sentiment of these statements is the same. We need to use complete counts that include every hunter's harvest and activity and opinion. On the surface, these may seem like reasonable requests. So why don't we require every hunter to report their harvest or every hunter to complete a survey? Put simply, complete counts are expensive and not needed. First, let's look at requiring every hunter to report their harvest. If every deer hunter was required to report regardless of harvest, it would cost the Game Commission about $850,000 a year. There are about 1.7 million tags, including general license antler tags plus the antlerless tags, that need to be reported each year. These reports, even in the online system, cost the Game Commission about 50 cents each. As a result, if hunters reported all of their tags, the cost would be $850,000. If we compare this to our current system where successful hunters report their harvest, the total cost is about $75,000 a year. Because of the amount of data collected by Game Commission deer aging personnel and number of reports received by hunters, our deer harvest estimates are very precise. In other words, there's not a whole lot of room to improve the estimates. Requiring every hunter to report every tag, regardless of harvest, would cost the Game Commission about $775,000 more each year, and most of this would be spent on reports of no harvest. From a statistical and practical perspective, we cannot justify increasing current costs by more than 10 times for little real benefit. Next, let's look at surveys and why we don't send a survey to every hunter. There are two aspects of surveys that impact the decision to send a survey to every hunter. First, like all estimates, Survey results have a plus or minus associated with them. As sample sizes increase, the estimates plus or minus get smaller. This decline occurs rapidly at small sample sizes. For example, when we go from 10 to 100 samples or 100 surveys in this graph, but then it begins to flatten. For example, from 50 to 35,000 surveys, the plus or minus doesn't change very much. This means if you receive surveys from 5,000 hunters, the estimates will have a plus or minus of about 1% which is similar to the results if you surveyed 35,000 hunters. Little is gained by surveying 35,000 when 5,000 would provide a similar result. A second consideration when deciding how many hunters to survey is cost. A survey samples, as survey sample size increases, cost also will increase. If we assume it costs about a dollar per survey for mailing and processing costs, surveying 5,000 hunters would cost $5,000. Surveying 35,000 hunters would cost $35,000. But remember, the results are similar. Therefore, surveying 35,000 hunters would waste about $30,000. Surveying a sample of hunters rather than tr trying to survey all hunters is effective. You get similar results and efficient. You end up spending less money. And as long as resources are limited, sampling will remain a necessity. Statistics are a requirement of reliable wildlife estimates. We cannot just count animals or harvest reports. Animals hide from us and hunters forget and do not report or return surveys. We need statistics to bridge the gap between what we can count, the animals seen or the harvest reports submitted, and what we cannot count, the animals that were not seen as well as the harvest reports that were not submitted.
Without statistics, we cannot address these missing data. When done properly with good sample sizes, statistics provide reliable results. For our deer harvest estimates, two methods give us similar results year after year. And finally, sampling is more efficient. Attempting complete counts simply wastes time and financial resources. Thanks, Chris, for enlightening us about deer statistics. Um, and we thank those of you who are watching for joining us today. We invite you to view additional discussion on this presentation with the Board of Game Commissioners during the March 2018 Working Group meeting, and you'll find that link in the description of the video below. So uh, that's all I have for you today, and hopefully you'll come watch some other webinars and learn more about Pennsylvania's Great Outdoors with the Game Commission. Thanks so much.